um, HR yeah. email boxes that schedule. All right, sounds good. Morning. Morning. And welcome to the Lord's House as we gather for worship and praise today. Today uh, we're going to be following Divine Service Setting 1 uh, in your hymnals on page 151 or it'll be up on the screens. We'll begin with our opening hymn.
come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our responsive psalm is a portion of Psalm 27. And if, it's, if you're not looking on the board, it is in your answer. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices which shall shout to joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Please rise as we join our voices in singing the common hallelujah and the verse. You don't want 
let the fish to get away. And what happens if the fish gets a bite on that and starts pulling on it to get away? It can hurt them, and it goes in even deeper, doesn't it, with that? And I don't know, we do a lot of catch and release when we go fishing, but sometimes it's kind of hard to get that hook out again, too. And it's, I don't know, do you ever feel sorry for a fish? No. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know a kid who felt really sorry this summer when we had a hard time getting the hook out. Um, what else do we do with those fish? Eat them, take them home and eat them, don't we? Well, if you were just listening to the gospel lesson that um, Pastor read, there were some fishermen in this gospel lesson, weren't there? Now, they didn't use hooks like this or lures or that sort of thing. What did they use? Nets. And I don't know if you've ever been out to the lake and you'll see the big tugboats out there and they're, they're putting the nets out and the big nets are out there to catch the fish um, to do it. Now, Jesus talked to these guys and said, hey, you're not going to catch fish anymore. You're going to catch people. I'm going to make you fishers of men. So does that mean that they're going to go out and hook people? No? What does Jesus mean by that? Or what does he have in mind? Yeah, tell them about God and spread the word. And people were going to follow them, weren't they? Jesus called the men to leave their nets and go to follow him with that. So, he had something completely different in mind, didn't he? And he certainly wasn't Hey, coming to hook us or take us and sell us to somebody for dinner, right? No, with that. And you know, the thing is, Jesus came not to hook us, but to be hooked for us. Because if you think about what he did, he let himself be caught, didn't he? And he was bound up and beaten and then died on the cross. And why did he do all of that? Any idea? Why did he do that? Save us save from our sins. Save our sins. And what else are we going to have because he did that? Yeah, eternal life. That's right. So, how do we follow Jesus now? By the Bible, by reading the Bible. That's right, Satan. Um, going to church, you're here this morning. I know that lots of you were at Sunday school this morning. All of those things. Those are ways that we that we follow Jesus, and it also um, means that we trust in Him to heal us inside and out. It means we call ourselves His as we sing His praise and say what He's done to save us. It means we'll follow Him to be alive forever with Him. So Jesus doesn't have any fishing books. But he certainly has lots of ways to bring us to him and for us to follow him. Thanks for coming up.
bless our time now. May this message shine in hearts and minds. May the light of your sun shine on us, bringing help and hope and comfort and peace as we grow in that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two stories about light to start off with. First, during a Sunday evening service, a thunderstorm unleashed a bolt of lightning that shut down the power of an entire community. People sat in silence in the church with only the candles on the altar giving them light in the darkness. Even the pastor was uncertain what to do. And then a woman from the altar guild fumbled around in the sacristy until she found the candles that they used each Christmas Eve. Bringing them out, she asked the ushers to pass them out and gave one to the pastor. He took his candle and lit it from the candle on the altar, and then he passed the flame to the woman, and she passed it to the others. Soon the room filled with light, which shone also through the windows of the church to the streets outside. Meanwhile, Outside, cars were stalled because street lights and traffic signals weren't working. Before long, people began to leave their vehicles and come into the church, joining the people who were sitting no longer in darkness, but in a great light. The second story about, is about a little boy named Bobby. He entered his first science fair in second grade. And because his mom had a green thumb, they decided to experiment with the growth of plants. He took two small green plants and placed one on a sunny windowsill and the other in a cardboard box. After a couple weeks, Bobby, he checked on the two plants. The one on the windowsill had grown a couple inches and had vibrant green leaves. The one in the box had actually grown a bit, but it had also lost all of its green color, becoming almost white, and its leaves were drooping. Thinking that the plant might die, Bobby cut a hole in one side of the box and set the box with the plant inside by the windowsill with the hole facing toward the incoming light. And you can imagine what happened. But Bobby was so excited by this discovery that over the course of a few weeks, the plant began to grow up through the hole. And a couple weeks later, it, it turned to grow up toward the light, and it even blossomed plant that had been in gloomy darkness and was all but dead had seen a great light and it turned that light toward that light and, and it blossomed. In our readings for today, the Old Testament one, Isaiah the prophet, he wrote about a time of darkness. He referred to this land of Zebelin and Naphtali, later it would be called Galilee. They were lands that were in deep darkness. This area was, was an invasion corridor. The Assyrians, the Babylonians, others, they came and they devastated, they left and then they came back again. I guess the modern equivalents would be any place where war comes and goes on a regular basis. We can picture the border between the Ukraine and Russia right now, or the Middle East in there, or, or, or North and South Korea there. One commentator, he referred to it as a place where feet of invading soldiers trampled every hole and left nothing but doom, gloom and distress. So you can imagine living a life like that day in and day out, the ongoing spirit of the people facing this light day in and day out, the darkness, the death, the despair, the, the hopelessness. And you know, the devastation, it wasn't only physical and emotional, but it was spiritual as well. The result was that false gods, false beliefs, or, or just no belief at all, just giving up, it came into their lives. They were led astray. They were led toward the darkness 
and away from the light, away from the lasting faith in God. And the result was that the, the people just kept getting further plunged into sin, further plunged into deep darkness, and they were lost with no hope or, or life, especially eternal hope in life. And you know, God, He wanted the people to know that this time of difficulty, that it wouldn't last. It wouldn't last. Just hang in there. Just trust in faith. Just like a, a power outage that zaps all the lights and plunges life into darkness. Like a, a cardboard box that blocks any sunlight from shining on the planet inside of it. He said that there would come a time when the candles would come out, the power would be restored, and a hole would be cut through the cardboard box so that light could shine in. And to this, to this, Isaiah, he came to the people with that word of promise. He said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in a land of deep darkness on them has light shined. Now, admittedly, it would take 600 years of long suffering, of darkness, and hanging on for the, for the light to come. But it did come. Or more accurately, he came. We're told, now when he, meaning Jesus, heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. You see, Jesus came as the light. He came with his word of invitation. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he said, come. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And you see, Jesus came to a people who were, who were still stuck in darkness. They were still worshiping other gods. They were living for themselves, for the here and now. Many weren't looking beyond today. They didn't no joy and peace and hope that was lasting. All they saw was the struggles, the devastation, the hopelessness of sin, of life, and then you just die. That's all they could see. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them that has light shine, we're told. You know, that's God's response. God is a God of light. A God of not abandoning, a God of strengthening and seeing through, especially in the most difficult of times. Providing all that we need, he says, along the way. Bringing hope and help and assurance. You know, God cares for us so much for, for, that he sent a light. A light to guide and to rescue. To give a future and a hope. The Father sent his son Jesus. And the light, he overcame the darkness. It starts with Jesus' invitation. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And there was just something about his words. For those men in our gospel reading, there was something about the word, something about the man, something about the invitation. The light was seen in those words. And we're told it caused Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, as well as two other brothers, James and John, we're told that they immediately, they left their nets and followed him. You see, the light that was shining from Jesus that day, that, that draw, it was so great, it drew them to him for growth and faith and life. It, it was powerful, it was a life-changing moment for them. A light had come, and they could see it. They could see it in him, and they needed it because they needed him. You know, you and I, we have had powerful, life-changing moments that have affected our lives forever. It may have been the, the day you started your career, 
or the day that you proposed or accepted a proposal. The moment you said, I do, and you started your married life. The day you settled in your forever home, or you moved to your forever country. The day that your kids were born. The birth of your grandkids. Or maybe your retirement. These are just some of those life-changing moments that you may have had, and the list can go on and on of life-changing moments. Well, Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago to bring mankind, to bring you and me personally, life-changing and life-bringing moments. And especially the light of faith, the strength to bear through when the darkness comes. A light that shines through the darkness. Jesus came because he knows the darkness that you have. Maybe you're wrestling with it even now. Or the darkness that you will face. And you know, what kind of sicknesses are you wrestling with? What mourning are you feeling? Things that hit you right to the core. What fears are yours? What sins have laid hold of you and has bound you? What gods have you been chasing after? What lies have you been bound up in? What cheating do you think you got away with? We, what bullying words have you spoken to, to hurt someone, to feel superior, or just to get that frustration out? What grudges and anger are you clinging to? You see, these are all darknesses, and darknesses that inflict us, or we've afflicted on the others. Jesus came to dispel it all. All of that darkness. Jesus brings light through his teaching, through his word, through his invitation to come. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, follow me. Jesus tells us that, that God loves everyone, and he is gracious, and he is forgiving. You know the passage, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how important that word of light is, especially if you're facing darkness, as you're taking your last breaths, to know that you should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, Christ brings light. He brings it through his healing, through his compassion, through his love, through his word. Jesus said, I've come. I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. And that life starts now, and it will be fully revealed in eternity. And the great good news is that Jesus brings light through his sinless life. He showed the world that all the demands of the laws, they've been fulfilled in him. Christ brings light through the glory of his death on the cross of Calvary, and it shines brightly at his victorious resurrection three days later. He has done this to show victory. Victory for all of those who hear, for all of those who repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All those who place their faith and trust and hope in him. He says healing and hope and light comes. It comes to all of us. Because Jesus has carried our sicknesses, our sins, our sorrows, our darknesses, and he shined his light. His light of forgiveness and love. And then he equips us. He equips us to reveal fully his compassion to our world around us. Because we've come to know it. We've come to know it and hold on to it for dear life that courage and strength and that confidence, that hope that sees us through all of the dark days that come. You know, because Jesus is the light of the world, he is shining on each one of you. He is giving you today, and he's giving you a future. 
whatever we're going through, he says, I'm with you, shining that light through it. There's no doubt that just that like all of God's people through history, we live each day surrounded by the storms and darknesses of life. But thanks to God, the darkness is continually being dispelled by Jesus. And so the light has shone on you today. Your darkness has been dispelled by Christ. You leave here knowing that you are forgiven and you are free and the path of light has been set for you. And now you can go. You can leave. You can shine this week. You can reach out and shine that light of light that we know changing people's darkness to hope and peace. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds clinging to Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll profess our Christian faith and now in the words of the Nicene Creed, I invite you to please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of very God, he God not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers for today, uh, we lift up prayers of sympathy to uh, Ursul uh, Orman and, and the family on the passing of Manfred this past Monday. Um, the funeral is scheduled for, in the, for later in the spring. We also lift in our prayers, those celebrating birthdays this coming week, uh, Karen Rader, J uh, Jason, and Nicole, and Michael, and baptismal birthdays, Evan, and Jillian, and Byron and Nadine and Ray, we keep all of them in our prayers. Lord, we pray for Berea and for Zion and for the church around the world. We ask that your light would shine through us, attracting many who still walk in darkness of their own making. We pray that others would walk with us in faith and confession, clinging to Jesus as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our governments, local, national, international. Open leaders' eyes and hearts to see the opportunities for peace between nations and safety among all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those near and dear to us. Thank you for the blessings that continually flow in theirs and our lives. Even with so much goodness, struggles arise, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Lord, we lift their cares and concerns to you, asking for your hand in the midst of it all. Lord, we especially pray that your loving arms will be around Urso and the family on the passing of Manfred. Give comfort and peace as only you can give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be with all those 
who live in loneliness and isolation, those who have been forsaken by friends or family, the community, or even within the church. Surround them with caring people and loving friends to make firm your great compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, be with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. Thank you for the past, and we look forward to the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And at, the, at this time, we're seated as the offering is brought forward. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my, in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for your sins.
Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Council meeting Tuesday at 7 o'clock, so please note that. Uh, um, what else? Elizabeth? Triple T will be meeting this coming Saturday from 9 to 11.30, so any ladies who would like to come out and uh, help us, that would be great to have you here. Uh, I also have two sign-up sheets that are, one's already up on the bulletin board, another one's going to be going up. Uh, we're looking for help. Uh, our family at Berea wants to have a Shrove Tuesday pancake supper, and they are doing that, but they've asked for our help. As you know, they only have a small amount of people, but they are very faithful and hardworking people. Um, but when they had had their suppers in the past, they have over 100 people come, and they've asked if we could help them out. And we said, sure, we'd be happy to help you. So there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board that lists the things that are needed. Actually, the thing is just, they would like cakes, so eight cakes. Um, they are providing some, but they need more. So if that's something that you think you're willing to do and help them out with, please sign up that you would make a cake. Uh, they also need bodies. So I've listed where they need help and the times that that help is needed. And again, if you uh, are willing to go up to Goddard and help them on Shrove Tuesday, which is February 21st, I believe, um, please sign up and we'll, uh, we'll get that back to them so that they know that they need help. Uh, the numbers that are there are the numbers they need from us. Uh, they already have people filling in slots, uh, but they need more. Again, they have over 100 people often come, and uh, they'd like our help. The second opportunity for you to help is our for our beloved Donut Days. Our uh, Board of Christian Outreach uh, wants to share the... Uh, the uh, what we do for donut days so we're going to put up a sign up sheet uh, members of the committee will still be on it'll be one or two these first few months and then it will go down to one member of the committee and then we're asking anyone in the congregation so that's men women young adults if you'd like to help out what that entails is set up just prior to service, help prepare juice, start coffee and tea, set up the tables, uh, get out cups, serviettes, etc. Serving, just pouring the coffee, tea and juice, and clean up, doing the dishes, wipe tables, put things away. Um, we just thought we would like to uh, have some of you help us out if you're, if you're so inclined to do that. Maybe you've been thinking about what can I do to help out. And this is your, your chance. So uh, take a look. The dates are already here. Cindy has made a lovely sign-up sheet. Uh, she has the dates on. It's the first Sunday of the month. And uh, if there's a month that you would like to help us out, we would greatly appreciate that. And I know the people of Berea also appreciate any help that we can give them for this um, Pancake Supper on Shrove Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Earl. Oh, oh yes. Sorry, Earl. You didn't tell me before. Please note that uh, to kick off our, our Lenten season, um, we are having our Shrove, not Tuesday, but Wednesday. We're going to have our pancake and sausage supper to kick off Lent. That'll be on the Wednesday, the 22nd. Um, the men's fellowship group for our church, they are usually the ones that host that first one. So tickets are available for that. And Earl will have them in the back. Did you mention about sign-up sheets for the suppers? Did I miss the big nope. Week oh, that's another one. There you go. So there is a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, as you know, we've in the past had different people, whether it's groups, families, or just individuals, sign up to help make uh, meals. It could be soup and sandwich. can be just uh, whatever. I, I know uh, chili is the one that the, they're going to be doing. Um, so if you're interested in helping with that, just sign up on one of the Wednesdays. They've been successful in the past. Uh, what we do is from 5.30 to 6.30 have the meal, and then at 7 o'clock we just do our midweek Lenten service. So that'll be starting soon. Okay? If nothing else, go in the Lord's peace.